I want every person in this world to feel so proud of your body. Start from within and be confident and kick ass and love the skin you're in. Hi, beautiful people. This is one of my friends, Faux Porter. I want to just tell you Faux's history, her story, how she got into modeling, and then we're going to dive into body positivity because Faux is a huge advocate of it. She is like the poster girl for that whole movement that's <laughs> happening that's really beautiful. And then to round it up, we'll talk about nudity, specifically Playboy, what that experience is like. So stay with us. Just being comfortable in your own skin, I think, is a really big thing that should be happening. I'm a woman and hear me roar kind of a thing. We all have insecurities, but I definitely am comfortable in my skin when it comes to that. So obviously, I'm not pushing anything on you guys. I'm not saying everybody take your clothes off and go run around naked. But a huge part of God is Grey is about demystifying the people that we see as the other. Someone that you might think is an enemy of... Um, decency? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Someone that is ruining the fabric of society. <laughs> so you've been modeling for 10 years. You're hitting your 10 year anniversary. I just had it last month in June. Was uh, America's Next Top Model one of the first things you did? Actually that was the the gateway for me to, into modeling. Like I was a preschool teacher before. I did uh, four years all throughout high school. I did like a college course for work, working with young children. And then from there, America's Next Top Model was having an audition. I just tried out with like luck of the draw, like they'll never call me. And then boom, 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 bada bing, bada boom. I was kind of a final 33, then I was 13. So yeah, it was a huge altering, life altering experience for me yeah. across the board. Yeah. What drew you to the audition in the first place? I have watched that show since I was 12. I was a 12 year old. <laughs> I would come home, run home on Wednesdays at 8 p.m., like get, you know, UPN or whatever channel it was on, I would yeah. watch America's Next Top Model religiously, so mm -hmm. I think that's what basically was like, maybe when I'm 18 I'll try out. I say the most, I wouldn't say negative, I think it's just the way the industry was, was very body focused, body imagery in a sense, like tattoos were really a taboo, you yeah. know, you kind of had, I had, I had pixie cut hair, so that was like, I had to say this athletic bubble. My individuality was kind of like pushed on the back burner for the industry, not because my agency was making me do all these things, but that's just how it was. The transition from that was when I was going to get married in 2016, I had been in the industry like, what, eight years at that point? And I just had one of those moments where I was like, I can't do this anymore. I have to be myself. I need to like be released. So I went and got my, my Pilates certification and I grew up my hair. Lo and behold, got back from my wedding and my agency was like, whatever you're doing, the weight you've put on in a sense, what it, like the woman you've become, keep it because clients want that. that. And that's, I remember the day I got that call being told, clients want you to be curvy with curly hair, they want your personality, they want the tattoos, so it started becoming this flip reverse when I stopped giving a hoot. Yeah. I really started being booked for who I am. I love that you're talking about all this because you guys know I've been a model as well and I am like the opposite. I was like exactly what they wanted. No one ever told me to lose weight because I was already skinny and that's really what you needed to be. You'd go to a casting and be all skinny white blonde girls. Mm -hmm. I mean maybe we'll throw in some brunettes yeah, for like exactly. a little diversity. Little, yeah, I should sing it. <laughs> it's so true. And then they'd have like a token black girl maybe but she would also be skin and bones. Yes. I knew girls that were eating cotton balls, eating ice cubes like before shows. Or smoking cigarettes and like coffee and that's like the suppressant. I didn't smoke really ever but I just remember like girls in the back like T -t 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 -t, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just, and you're on an athletic shoot too so this happens. Uh, <laughs> yeah it's, it's crazy. It's so crazy. Yeah. I wanted to model in Paris because I wanted mm -hmm. to like it's have totally that experience. Mm -hmm. They were like great just come in get measured we'll take your Polaroids. So they measured me and there I was a 27. So they were like, okay, you need to be a 24, ideally, or a 25 tops. So I literally didn't eat anything for two weeks. Oh I was just God. drinking juice and stuff. I like practically crawled into the office with no energy. They measured me and they were like, 
We only made it to 25, but, but we there might be salvage for you. Oh. They wanted to like get me my visa and stuff, and then I was like, you know what? I can't live to be starved because I my body type is 27 like minimum mm -hmm. 25 means I have to start yes so all of this transition that's been happening is so exciting it's like when your livelihood's being put on your weight and who yeah you know who's booking you it just kind of gets crazy the transition is not only refreshing but it's it's just what needed to happen if you're a company now that's not using uh, Victoria's Secret that's not using <laughs> that's not using I love her calling model. people out I mean, I'm sorry Call well out. it's also not every company is doing it every single brand new that's actually successful is doing it Victoria's Secret has now gotten on some curvier girls because of the backlash of all of the statements that were made yeah. so it's happening I feel proud that I'm able to to help push that. What do you think changed? How did this transition happen? Honestly, I think for it started for not just me, but for the huge industry, Ashley Graham, when she did Sports mm -hmm. Illustrated. So they actually used a very beautiful, voluptuous girl and it skyrocketed. It just changed everything. I think it started with putting a curvy girl in a skinny girl's place. The crazy thing about plus size too is 10 years ago, like we're talking about, you, a model was 25 inches to 27 inches. Mm -hmm. Plus size was what a size I was 12 or it no, like, 14, it was, I think it was like a 12 to 16 and that's... So there's no what? room for in between. No. Um, there was, there was straight yeah. size and there was plus size. Curve mm -hmm. was like unheard of. I think the word plus size, I'm not a fan of it. So there are plus size females who are like, that's just what we are, but I think curve is a better terminology for me in a sense. How do you think the industry's transitioning into inclusivity has changed the way you walk into a casting or even the way you walk into the bedroom with your husband? Like, has it changed your mindset in life? A hundred thousand percent. I think when it first started happening for me personally is when I started being okay with myself naked. Not just being naked from public, obviously. Being naked in, with myself in the mirror. So you haven't always been this confident with your body? No. Mm -hmm. So I will put this out there. I was in a Justin Timberlake music video in 2014. Oh, I'm gonna pull the clip. <laughs> yeah, pull it up. Pull it up. <laughs> We're, we're like full <laughs> makeup now. It was my first time doing nude and it was very tastefully done. It's, the video is called Tunnel Vision. It was tastefully done. It was very, it was just beautiful um, projections on our naked bodies. There's three models. Mm -hmm. And that's when I literally was like, I want to be naked all the time. Like I didn't care about anybody else's point of view. I'm a very, I'm a modest person in a sense, but I was so liberated mm -hmm. and that's when my mind this is a good moment to ask though, do you always see nudity as something that like equates to sexuality or sensuality? Hell no. No one can tell you but yourself how to be or how to look nude or how to feel nude. It's funny too because from my experience I was feeling so repressed growing up in this modesty culture, growing up in, you know, that you have to be ashamed of your, your body in that way. and. When I got divorced and I was going on what I call my tramp page, mm -hmm. a part of that was I started doing some nude modeling. I really did it out of like this rebellion. I was just like, you know what, I've been on this side for so long now, I'm gonna break down that door and be on the other side. And then I realized when I was fully comfortable with that and I kind of break that barrier for myself, mm -hmm. then I wanted to, today's not a good example because it's really hot outside, <laughs> but. <laughs> but I I think it's much more sensual now for me to be more covered up and I feel sexier when I'm covered up so we're not saying you have to go out no. you don't have to get your picture taken naked you don't have to be in front of anyone no naked. no what would your recommendation be to any girl of any body type that maybe just doesn't feel comfortable in her skin doesn't feel comfortable in her sensuality and wants to start liberating herself in that way. This is something I've actually been asked a couple times with even just body positivity. Being comfortable in your skin starts with within. I had a really hard body dysmorphia, like mm -hmm. vision of myself. Once I really started taking myself, being comfortable in my own skin and walking around the house naked and just being in my own element was when I really started getting confidence. I really started like trusting myself 
being able to be in the industry and not having them take away that like form of identity. There's a quote I always say, um, use your body in every way you can. Don't be afraid of it or what people think of it. It's the greatest instrument you'll ever own. I think a lot of us in the Christian community have had to compartmentalize pieces of ourselves. Like this is my spiritual self. This is my physical self. The flesh is like evil above all else. And obviously that ties into sexuality and nudity, etc. But really, my genuine belief is that God wants us to be holistic, healed, happy, healthy individuals. Yes. And if you're always disregarding your body as mm -hmm. fleshly, as, as undesirable, as sinful or capable of causing other people to sin, I think the way you see your body changes everything. Maybe mm -hmm. if you stop seeing your body as the villain, then you want to exercise more. You want to walk in a room, not leading with sex, but yes. just leading with like, this is the temple that I've been given. Yes. I'm like presenting myself to the world yes. as is. My body is beautifully and wonderfully made. Yes. You're able to have, even whatever religion you may be, I think confidence is still able, it's, it's, it's a thing. You can still be confident and still be religious. I love when you said my, my temple. I always have this thing that I say like, my, you know, cherish your temple, but sometimes your temple wants a cheesecake. You know what I mean? That's, like, that's how I think. And for anyone that is in a relationship, like a sexual relationship too, getting that on your own first, you Girl, again, you're you not doing this it. for everybody else. You're mm -hmm. doing this for you. And when you bring that health and that confidence and that joy into a relationship because you already have it, yes. it's a game changer. Uh, I'm a huge fan of RuPaul. <laughs> She always says, if you can't love yourself, how the hell you gonna love somebody else? Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's just common sense, but some people need to be told it, that it's okay, you know? Yeah. So, and it's sure. okay. It's okay to love yourself. I promise. So the last thing I want to touch on, which will be maybe the most controversial that'll get the dislikes on this video, is you modeling for Playboy. For any of you who don't know, Playboy has a really interesting, complicated history. Hugh Hefner was a pioneer in that he was the first person to have a black woman on the cover of yes. Playboy, on, yes. on the cover of a magazine in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he was also... I used to go to the Playboy Mansion when I first got to LA, and, you know, there was definitely the misogyny, the old school, like, women are objectified, the men are in positions of power. And I don't, I don't know. He's a product of his time. No. They actually took us into, like, the uh, headquarter briefing room and they were like, this is the questions you will get asked. These are the derogatory statements you might get told from Playboy. But Hugh Hafner was a revolutionist. That's how yeah. I see it. He made it okay to talk about sex and pleasure and being who you are as it's not taboo he just made it okay for that people to talk about it granted as we go into like the 90s there was like the exploitation the big boobs blonde hair and it's not okay to be like oh well, that was you know boys will be boys kind of a thing but i feel like every aspect of this and whatever whatever's grown to be something great has gone through all of those test trials trial and errors to see what works playboy now is a woman forward magazine and I can say that wholeheartedly. It used to be entertainment for men. Now okay. it's entertainment for everyone. My spread was shot by an eight and a half month pregnant woman. Okay. And the sand dunes <laughs> of uh, Pismal Beach. And this woman's hiking up these trails. It was so liberating for me to run around naked in the sand dunes and be myself. I was giddy. I was like, <laughs> And to know that there was a woman backing me. But not only that, there was, there was five women there. Everyone was just so happy and enthralled to see you me and all my glory. It's not about being posing nude at all. It was for me, not my husband, not the media norm. It was for me. And I know 30 years from now, if I would have done it, I would have regretted it and kicked myself in the head. So I 100% I'm still very proud of my decision. And again, I know this will be controversial to some people. If you are someone that honors modesty and wants to do that in their own life, like exactly. you might be offended by that. Too but much of whatever your principles are for your own morality, for your own life, for your own path mm -hmm. with God, mm -hmm. that is completely your own. But exactly. 
there is no point in our faith where I think we should be imposing that on anyone else. Like one of the things I noticed when I was still kind of dressing like a hoe in my <laughs> early 20s was like, maybe just do the slit here yeah. and then you have long pants exactly. on. But again, it's like that is a journey that I went on for myself and I'm completely at peace with the way I dress now and mm -hmm. I feel beautiful and elegant and that's yeah. the way I like to be. The saying was I think was like, some women are empowered by modesty, some women are empowered by nudity. It's not your place in which way to tell her, it's it's what her decision is as a whole. So stand your ground and I'll stand my ground, but I'll respect your ground as long as you respect my ground. Everyone has their own story, everyone has their own destiny, everyone has their own modesty and their own sense and their own sense of being. Yeah. And I don't think anyone else besides that single individual should be told differently. That being said, thank you for having me on. I'm thank so you happy that you, like it's it's I'm just happy to spread the word. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um I do post some, you know, risque photos, but again, it's not for attention. It's only for me, okay? And this <laughs> it's I love being able to be my own self and I love sharing that with other people. But it's very inspiring. She has a beautiful relationship with her husband, beautiful relationships with her friends, with her career. She's very empowered and driven and motivated mm -hmm. and for me just being exposed to a woman in her flow and her confidence mm -hmm. just is a good reminder thank Ditto. you for the permission <laughs> to be who i am thank you guys for watching we love you guys so much please like subscribe share with your friends donate to my patreon or yeah. venmo if you can we, we love you guys god bless <laughs> <laughs> Please put that on the one last thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>